heart, right in my stomach. And uh, I would talk to him all the time on the phone. And I had talked to him a couple of days prior to that. But just like we felt like we lost our king, we our hero. Uh, and so I pull up in the funeral. It's on like 60-something street. Same place they did uh, Chris Lighty's funeral and uh, Prodigies. And most likely Fat Joe's whenever I pass away. I'm just keeping it a buck. That's where I would want it to be. Um, I was scared to go in. I sat in the truck. It was me and my wife. And I was so tough at the time. So macho at the time. I knew I would go in there and cry in front of everybody. And so I didn't go in. I sat in the corner um, and all the legendary shit you see in the pictures, the Mary and Kim crying and all that, we sat out there in the car and we watched. And we were so heartbroken. And though we lost the king, the city was on an uproar. The city was showing so much love. Every song on the radio was Biggie. Every kid left school. Everybody was in the streets. So I go over to Brooklyn. To where he lived in front of his building. I used to go visit Biggie in this building. In his crib. And so. I went out there. With a candle. And with flowers. The whole hood saw me. So when you see the hood in front of Brooklyn, jumping up and down, Fat Joe was right behind them. Uh, and so he lived in one of them buildings. I guess you'll call it a brownstone where they got the little, where they put the garbage. We had a bunch of candles out there and flowers. And, uh, and that's what, re what I remember of this day. Uh, and so Biggie was so le least likely to succeed. And he became a, 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 a sex symbol. A GQ cover icon. And so he was born to break the cycle. And so, and so today, we feel weird. We feel hurt. So every day, every, every, every time this day comes, we just hurt. We feel terrible. We couldn't be there for our brother. Someone who put it down for the city like that. And for hip hop. And so we mourn Biggie Smalls. Biggie Smalls started out an underground rapper, battle rapping everybody. I never heard a whack Biggie rhyme in my life. And so I can tell you stories I told you before. Biggie calls me up and says, Joe. I want to rock with your boys, Bone Thugs and Harmony. But they were cool with Tupac. And so when I hit them up, they said, Joe, we cool. I said, but Biggie's my brother, bro. So once again, Steve Lobel. I called them up. I called Bone. We set it up. They went in the studio. And they love me for it because they made Bone and Biggie, Biggie, Bone and Biggie, Biggie, Bone and Biggie, Biggie. And yeah, they caught the white van voice. They caught the white van voice. So, as you, I think this thing is acting up.
I ain't gonna lie to you. Because I try to link with the man, not the myth, and it ain't going to him. And tonight's not the night for these guys to be playing with us. Fuck. Rashad tumbling dice on the check-in. Oh, wow. No, that ain't who I'm trying to go live with. No. Oh, this is crazy, ass. Every time I touch this thing, it's trying to force me. Somebody must have hacked my shit. I never believed in the hacking. But every time I try to go on the, um, to connect, see, that's why I ain't want to upgrade my shit. They made me upgrade my shit. It's like I try to go to requests and they keep trying to force me to go pick somebody we never heard of. Pick and press the button. You see? They try to force us. Mm -hmm. Your clock, can I see you? I'm trying to, there you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what's this, a new way to request? How do you do that? Yo, Clark. Yes, sir, my brother. Yo, Clark Kent. Oh, yes, sir. My brother, I love you so much. Yo, yo, Clark, man, you're different, man. You're just different. I'm oh, be honest wait. with you. Before we go any further, I found it. <laughs> I, I, I swear to God, I found it I an, need hour it bad. I an hour hey, ago. An hour ago. everybody, Clark Kent promised me a hit, and he said he found it. Yo, I Sam, yo, Clark, I need to know when's the first time you ever met Biggie Smalls. I met him on his block. I think he was like 19 or 20. It was before the Puff Daddy and everything. It was right after the source. Right after after that. So you Maddie seen him on the source on Unsigned Hype and you said, yo, I gotta yeah. meet this guy from Brooklyn. Well, my thing was I had to hear the guy that they put in the source, you know what I'm saying? It's not like the source gave you a tape so that you could listen to when you got it. So I got to know, well, who is this guy? And so, you know, I made the calls to go figure it out. And when I met him, I just, all I wanted to do was hear him rap. I was like, yo, spit something. And he was crazy. Oh, so His you voice. pulled up, but, and let's be clear, everybody. Uh, let's be clear. Shout out to Mario Winans on the check-in. Let's be clear. You at this time, you're a superstar. You're a big deal, Clark. No, I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. Oh no, 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 no bullshit. No bullshit. Listen, you're a lead DJ. I remember waiting online with I met DJ Khaled at a Clark Kent battle. Yeah. And man, that's how I met Khaled waiting online to go see you battle. So <laughs> at this time, at least your name is big out there. Yeah, it, it was cool. It was cool. <laughs> and so, I mean, you know, so I, I've you been around for a while. Day you met Notorious B.I.G. Was it on Fulton Street? No, it was on St. James in Fulton, right on the corner. Right on the corner. You know, I used yeah. to go to Biggie's house. So oh. now people don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you used to come to the Bronx and shoot dice with us. I yes. used to go to Brooklyn and fuck with Biggie. Yes. That's, 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 it's only right. That's it's only right. right. It's only right. That's, it's so the first time I met Biggie Smalls, mm -hmm. I already had Flojo out, and you know me, I always been working, mm -hmm. and so I, I I was giving the DJ some vinyl. Yo, you Biggie know, you know, you know, Biggie stage. really, really fucked with your shit, right? No, I I mean, that's my brother. Like, I'm saying, but you know, like he fucked with your music, right? Um. Well, you had conversations with him about it? Yeah, no, he, I was around him a lot, so we used to play music all the time, and your records got played in the midst of all these things that we were playing. And so he fucked Biggie, with you. I was there. I love Biggie, bro. I used to talk to him every other day. He so he's on stage in the lyricist lounge. He battled like twenty guys. He took everybody out. Sounds like I'm right. Sounds in about the right. Crowd, same Puff Daddy, just a little chain. And going crazy. Who wants next? Who? He was making a movie. And so that's how I met Big, right? And we mm. became friends ever since then. And um, and I remember him. I remember going to his house before he had the bread. 
Mm -hmm. Right? I used to go hang out with him in Brooklyn. But one night I'm with him. I said this story recently. One night I'm with him in there, and we just dressed up. He got a hockey jersey on. I got the army fatigue with the chuckers. And then he invites me to a party. And when I go to the party, he has a salmon suit on with the gators. With That's when I said, holy shit. I think that was a Palladium. My brother's a star. That, that was a Palladium. That's when I sat in the crowd. I said, I couldn't fucking believe this shit. <laughs> salmon gators, salmon gators. I think that was a Palladium. It was the Palladium. And they got that famous picture with Ed Lover, right. Rob Love, right. all of them. Uh, was in that? That was a legendary night. You okay? Yeah, we. I, I need you still. Don't go far. <laughs> As a yes. Why? Who? Yeah. Why? Don't worry oh. about it. If he comes, jump. Stop. They're coughing. Oh yeah, he could come on later and tell me about his experience, how he loved Biggie. Yes. They all. You know, <laughs> it's it's a big night. You know what I'm saying? Uh, clock. Yeah. So, Clark, how do you get to producing the legendary? How, did you produce more songs than just Brooklyn's Finest for Biggie? It was there songs well, Brooklyn's that fin Brooklyn's Finest was Jay Z's song, but I produced uh, "Sky's the Limit." I produced "Players Anthem." I played produced "Need You Tonight." I produced those were um, songs on Junior Mafia. "Sky's the Limit" was Biggie, and I produced "Come On" on Junior Mafia's sec. I mean, on Biggie's second album. Um, no, actually, third. So you yeah. you produce Sky's the Limit. So you, yeah. so you had your hands more on the second album than the first one. I only was on one song, but we made Junior Mafia's album together. I was one of the executive producers on that. Wow! And uh, so you worked with him on the whole family, right? And and and, and Biggie was very much like Pun, to where Biggie wanted all his people to live. He wanted them all to win. He made C's a rapper. For he sure. made uh uh he made, he made all of little them Kim, little Kim. Right. Um and so and so Pum was the same way. You know, he was trying to make Lorena a girl rapper for Terror Squad. Like he was like, yo, let me write your rhymes, Lorena. And that'd have been crazy. Like that. You know so, that would have been crazy, right? Oh no, that would have been nuts. That would have been Time crazy. Because Lorena's a star already. Yeah, but imagine how we, he was like, sis, I promise. used to beg her every day. I can't even imagine her saying rhymes that hard. Nah, she wouldn't do that shit. But listen, <laughs> they're saying, um, so all the songs are great, but this Brooklyn Finest, mm -hmm. I remember Biggie telling me, right? People don't want to believe it or they want to believe it, whatever. I remember Biggie telling me, yo, Joe, you got to meet my man, Jay-Z. Um, I hang out with him a lot now. And, Joe, uh, I, night, I, I, told, I told you that when I first met you. What you said? I, I was like, yo, you like, you run the, I was telling you that you run, you, you about to be the new guy running the Bronx. You need to meet my man. Cause when he comes out, he's going to run Brooklyn. And then you mentioned, well, Biggie's running Brooklyn. <laughs> and I was like, well, my <laughs> man comes out. <laughs> yo. <laughs> and me and you, me and you go a long way back, Joe. You gotta like I'm talking about no, no, no. We go back before, before rap right, and all that. Right, you know what I'm right. saying? And 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 uh, the question everybody asks, which is bullshit to me, because everybody could live. Everybody, you know, would Jay Z have been as big as he is if Biggie was still alive? Of course he would. You know, this is what they all say. Of course uh, he would have. Of course, of course he would have, right? Yeah, yeah, because they were two different people. You know what I'm saying? Jay Z is as big as he is because of the person he is. Like he is the embodiment of a hustler. Like Biggie is the embodiment of a rapper. You know what I'm saying? It's it's different. Like he would have been consistently being the best rapper around, and Jay Z would have been the guy turning the deal into something else, as well as being yeah, one yeah, of the I best. Get, I get what you're saying, and yeah. they loved each other. 100%. And they have mutual respect for each other. Yeah, on site. Like, when I introduced them, they immediately became friends. Shot a video the next day. You know, I can't lie. I can't, I've never asked Jay-Z that. But uh, definitely in my conversations with Biggie, 
Mm -hmm. He would talk about Jay Z a lot. I'm that, yeah. That's no bullshit. That's we, no. Yeah. <laughs> the crazy part is before that, before they met. It's almost like he didn't even want to mention him because I used to tell him about him. I'm like, yo, my man, my man, my man. And he'd be like, yeah, he, he all right. Until he really heard Dead Presidents Part 2. And then he was like, oh, yo, nah, nah, your man, your man is, is serious shit. And that, you know, like led into at, at the, the moment where I could introduce him, I introduced them. They didn't even speak. They just started laughing. Like on site, like when I let me tell you something because I'm laughing. getting goosebumps. I'm getting goosebumps all over my body, right? Um, real shit. Um, was that the is is that because yo, Clark, you different, bro, and yeah, I love your yeah. modesty, I love your humbleness, but Clark, you you fucking design sneakers, you. You designed 82 pair of fucking <laughs> sneakers, man. And you don't even talk about it. You don't you don't did the biggest things you could ever do. But I'm wondering, uh what's your greatest accomplishment? Is it Brooklyn's finest? Nah, it's uh successfully taking care of my family. Besides that. No, that's it. You asked me a question. That's it. That's it. Taking care of your family. You got a beautiful wife, beautiful family. Right. Oh, That's God it. bless. Being able, no, no, being no. able to is, do that it is, is, we is all, the most we important We all on thing. that type of time. You yeah. know, I feel the same way you feel. Okay, so and you want to know what's under we, that? We do it all for our family. You um, want to know what's under that? Yeah, I, I want to know if, if Clark can't die, yeah. what would we be saying at the funeral? Yo, he made Brooklyn's finest. Nah, what is nah. It? I... I I relentlessly stayed on Jay Z's back to make him rap, and we made his first. And we made reasonable doubt. No, and that 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 now that's a joke for a moment. That mm -hmm. I've heard you say that before, but they haven't heard you say that before. So well, Jay, Jay, Jay said it in records singing, though. When Jay Z was hustling, yeah. you was trying to encourage him to rap. No, I was begging him, like to the point where I would put him on remixes. And he would go back out of town. And then I would like, yo, I need you to come back to do another remix. I wouldn't have a remix set up. But in the time that it took him to come back, I would go find remixes to do. And then I would like, yo, let me introduce you to this artist. This artist needs rhymes written. And like, he would be writing people's rhymes and doing remixes and going back out of, t out of town. And I'm begging him like, dog, you have to do this. And you know, at, at one point, like he even said it in Ludacris Records, uh, I, I I I rhyme to keep Clark off my back while grinding G packs because Woo! I you know I was you know Clark I was relentless Clark, man I was having dinner with uh with Mary and I might be talking too much this might be too much tea <laughs> right but I was having dinner with you know my wife and Mary and and we family mm -hmm. in New Orleans and I asked her how the record got done on reasonable doubt she was mm -hmm. like yo. Dame and Jay pulled up <laughs> on me. They had a brown paper bag full of money, and she was like, "Where's the studio?" Yo, and all five dollar bills. And she did her thing. All nickels. <laughs> like dead, like dead serious. All five dollar bills. Oh God, man! And uh, and shout out to Nori. Nori's on the check in. Everybody's Nori's, on the Nor check. -in. Nori's my brother. Ask him who taught him how to use how to rhyme in the booth. You taught Nori how to rhyme in the booth? I taught him how to how to make song structure. He'll tell you that. He'll tell you that. I taught him you how know, to how to make song structure. Because Nori just used to rap. And and, and be clear, I, I know him since since left right. Like that's my man. Him and Pone was my man. But when when I had to work with them on on um on, on War Report, like I was I was telling them like, dude, you have to write a verse and then you need another verse and I'm going to get a hook for you and, and you, you have to stop at a certain point. You just can't keep rhyming. Like, we're going to make a song. You know, I told, I him, I told him how to make Forrest songs. Gump of rap. <laughs> yeah. You might be the, the original Forrest Gump of rap. Because mm -hmm. while you're telling me these stories, I see you at all these places and, and nobody else was moving like that where... Nobody else was moving like that. Uh, 
Um, nobody else was moving like that where um, you and everything. E everything, everything silently. I called a friend of ours mm. recently, a friend of ours that I don't want to talk too much about, and, and somebody I ain't talked to in 25 years, Damn. right? Recently. And just, how, you know wait, how could someone How could someone not want to talk to Joe for 25 years? No, I'm just saying it's 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 it's, 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 it's twenty five years. He was a big. I, I I don't. I cannot. I cannot elaborate. Okay, cool. Right, but in the middle of my conversation with him, I'm like, "Yo, bro, you know I got your back. You know I told you know I never told nobody about you, because mm -hmm. you know in this show people think I got a big mouth, but I ain't got a big mouth about the shit. I ain't got to have a big mouth about. Same. <laughs> I let you know. That Shit, but you don't really know, right? Same, so same. I called a friend of ours, and I said, boom. And he said, wow, I was just on the phone with Clark. And I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, <laughs> I didn't talk to this guy in 25 years. I'm calling him up, to, you know, because I heard a little something. I was like, yo, you good? Because I got your back, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, yo, Clark just told me the same thing. He just called me and said, what the fuck? Yo, Clark, you are everywhere, man. I, I, I don't I don't I don't know if it's that. It's just that I, I've been I've been a, a good person in every situation. Every, you know every what I mean? time. Yeah. Every time. So, let me and sometimes when I get sidetracked, you'll call me up and be like, yo, Joe, that is not it, bro. You'll call well, me up and be like, yo, Joe, don't nah. And I'll be like, yo, Clark called my, me and listen, I'm going my, listen my, to Clark. My motto is, if my brother's in trouble, so am I. So if I see someone that I care about and they're about to do some shit that, that could be detrimental to them or their family, it's only right to call them as their brother and say, yo, that might not be the right thing to do. Let me ask you a question. What is your top five Biggie songs? Oh, shit. Downfall. Who Shot You? Oof. Um, I like the guttery Biggie, like the, the gutter, 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 where you hear his pen go absolutely crazy. Like, dog said, I could hear sweat trickling down your cheek, dog. <laughs> on, on, on Think Big, on, on I had Think the truck with the system. <laughs> I was riding around the Bronx. I might have played that 10,000 times with the hook, the hatch. The, mm. the, the window in the back was up. The windows was down. It, it was so disrespectful how I was bumping that song. Yeah. So you say, who shot you? You say, pray and pray for my downfall. Yeah, Whoa. downfall. Like he said, he said, uh, what he said on downfall? He said, sir, he said, you'll be more gone than Freeman. Woo. And most, most people take that lightly. They just think Morgan Freeman. I'm like, no, he said, you'll be more gone than free man. Like that's, Ooh. that's, that's, it's fucking Ooh. crazy. That um, it, it's so many, but like he, the verse that he put on um, that he put on Think Big, where he said when he when he said lyrically I'm untouchable, uncrushable, living yo, yeah, bananas. Like it, it's so many places where his performance was insanity that it's just hard to say. But I I look for the rhymes where he's going like kicking the door, my nigga, oh. Jesus Christ. That's how we started this shit. We started off the show on your top the door. Short, like My daughter ain't know that one. She was like, ask me any question about Biggie. She thinks she know yeah. Biggie. Like, My <laughs> Biggie daughter said, studies Biggie. <laughs> yeah, he I said, like, what are she said, what? I said, kick in the door. He she said, like, get, in, get in that ass quick, fast, like Ramadan. Ramadan. Quick, fast, like Ramadan. It's the quick rap fast. phenomenon. Don Dada. Yo, they, Ain't nobody say they rhymes like Biggie, man. Like Not Biggie could all. say Biggie could say something that was super simple, and you would think it was a thousand times better than it is, man. He 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 he. You I'm said telling four. You. you want me to pick the fifth one? No, nah, I mean, I I could pick the fifth one. Unbelievable, unbelievable, or or it's so many that he yeah, just so went many. crazy on. I would have said take on, crack man. commandments. Ten Crack Commandments is dope. It's really dope. It's a dope story. But like I said, I'm looking for Never get five. high on your own supply. Yeah, but see, like I said, I'm the guy that who's is going. Yeah, 
I want to hear the bars, bars, bars. Like on the what he went crazy. You okay. know what I'm saying? The what he went crazy. But my downfall. Oh, come on, man. I, my mom's a pot mix me with Jamaican rum and whiskey. Oh, what a set off. I should have been sped off, squeezed, let off. Woo! Crazy. Woo! Crazy. Woo! Like crazy, crazy, crazy. Like, I mean, shit, long kiss, good night. What the Ooh. fuck, B? See, so what people are going to hear and what they're going to like is going to be different than what I like because I was one of them dudes standing next to him going, that's all right. That's all right. To make him go harder. You know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> one of my claim the fangs, right? And I'll let you go after this because we got a bunch of people trying to get involved with this. Uh, my claim to fame is I was in the studio with Big when he made Hypnotize. That's crazy. And I was there. I That's was, Loretta I was, met him. I was That's in, where Loretta I, met him. I was in LA and when he did Hypnotize. I was in the studio with him and Hypnotize all day. He kept playing the boom, zoom, zoom, boom, boom. What's that? Peaches and her. What, 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 what's that? The original oh, sample. Herb Albert, Herb Albert Rise. Remember that was Luke and Laura in General mm. Hospital. Crazy. And then it comes into that. And so every time, I don't care if I'm in Africa, China, wherever I'm at, Hypnotize comes on. I remember I was there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I remember the first party that we heard hypnotized good and loud was the actual Soul Train party. And and it just just played it like a, a hundred times, man. It was, no, it was, it was just too much. Right, it was. It was And then it was. when you saw that video, that video I always wanted the shirt that big the big was wearing in that video, like the mariners. <laughs> Like it was like a like a like it was like a fucking uh, 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 like if you was riding a Nordica boat, mm -hmm. and it would look another level. We knew it was over. They, he had the the girl swimming in the tank behind him, and you was just like, "Yo, this guy, this this is yeah. gone." It was gone. It was gone. My brother, I love you. I think you got to click off, man. I'll talk to you soon. Love is God love, bless bro. You, man. Thank you, Clark, for coming My on. My man. Here. Love is love. Rest hey. in peace, B.I.G. Rest in peace, B.I.G. This new shit. Yo, Azzy, you got to be here so we can get to this new thing right here. Because I don't know. Listen, guys, I got a new. Uh, yeah, I'm old. Look good as fuck, though. Huh. Look good as fuck, though. But listen, um, you know, they switched up the shit on me. Hold on, let me see. Uh, hold up, I got my man on the check-in. Very on the check-in. Let me see, this is weird the way they do it. Yo, hit maker, you don't know who I know. Nah, hit maker. Um, is it coming? You gotta tell Rich to hit, um, yeah, my guy. I just I just sent for him as a request. You know, I'm gonna have a couple of friends come up in here, chime in, talk about uh Biggie. 